The purpose of this lesson is to learn how to use the macro recorder, about some problems with code created by the macro recorder, how to run an existing macro, and how to use buttons, clip art, shapes, word art, and smart art graphics to run a macro. Just like we did in the prior lesson, we're going to create a new macro, and we're going to do it by using the macro recorder. Now, like I said in the previous lesson, the macro recorder only does part of what we actually need for our code, but the idea here is just to get a, a basic start to it so we can see how it works, and then also so we can figure out some of the code that's actually used. Okay, so I'm going to create a new macro, call it my macro, and I'm going to give it the Control shift m I'm going to store it in this workbook. The description is going to be, this is my macro. And what I want to do with this is I just simply want it to select the cell over here and say, hello world. And then let's make this bold. So we'll make it bold. We'll increase the size to 18. And there we have our new cell. So let's resize this. There's the new size. And we're done recording. So that's our macro recorder. All right, so now what I want to see is the code. So I'm going to go to Visual Basic. On the left side, I'm going to expand modules. And if I click on module one, nothing shows up over here, but I have to right click and view the code. And now what it does is it shows that my macro, which is run by the keyboard shortcut of Control Shift M, selects the range, even though it won't select only one cell, it's still a range of G7, which was G here and 7 here. And then it selected it. It took the active cell, whichever one is the active one, which is that G7. It uses the formula R1C1 for row 1, column 1 format, and sets it equal to hello world. Then it takes the range G7 and selects it because I clicked on it again. The selection.font.bold, it turns it true, so now it is bold. And we'll get more into what these layouts mean. Uh, then it goes into with selection.font. Okay, so now what it does is it sets all of the stuff for the size of this. Now you'll notice I didn't change the font name. I didn't change if it's strike through. I didn't change superscript, subscript, anything else. The only thing that I changed is I made it bold and I set the size to 18. So what that means is that our, our code here actually added some extra stuff that doesn't really need to be here. And it, it just simply did it because that's what the macro reporter thinks it's supposed to do. All right, so these lines of code that I actually didn't do anything with, they don't even need to be here. So the idea here is, is that what we can do is we can go through this and say, okay, well, I don't need any of this stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And I didn't set the font, so I can delete it. And so now this is actually what I need to be able to perform this particular macro. All right, so we'll get more into why I got rid of all the other stuff and how the other stuff works later, but for now, just be aware that that's actually all that we need is just the bold and the size. That's all that I changed. And then I did change the column width. All right, now that I have my macro, I can run it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And I'm gonna delete this column just so I can see that it does work. So we're gonna delete it. I'm gonna select A1. And then I'm going to run my macro. So I'm going to go to Macros, My Macro, and Run. And there it goes. So it selected G7, and it did select that as the active cell, and then it changed the text to Hello World, and then it changed the size to 18 and made it bold. So if I go back here to Home, I'll see that it's 18, it's bold, and it did increase the size of the column. Now this works, and if I do the keyboard shortcut of Control shift m it would also do the same thing. But what if I don't necessarily want to have my users where they have to learn a keyboard shortcut and I don't want to show them how to turn on the developer toolbar and I don't want to have them go through the macros to, to actually run it. I want to give them a nicer way to, to actually see that they can run it and then run it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an icon up here in the toolbar for them. So I'm going to right click, customize the ribbon, and then what I'm going to do here under Home I'm going to create a new group. And by default, it calls it New Group Custom. I'm going to rename it, and I'm just simply going to call it Macros. And maybe we'll give it an icon of a smiley face. 
and click OK here. Now, the icon of the smiley face isn't going to show up unless we look at it in other, other views, so the picture there doesn't really matter. But what I want to do, though, is I want to add that macro to this new group. So up here in the top left where it says Choose Commands From, I'm going to drop down and select Macros. And you'll see my macro is here, and if I click Add, it now shows up over here. All right, but I don't want it called my macro. I want it called Hello World, so I'm going to rename it. And let's give it this whole person here and click OK. And then, so now I have an icon with a little person that says Hello World. If I click OK, here is my icon. And now if I click this icon, it will actually run my macro. It says Hello World, and then it increases the size, and also the um, text becomes bold, and it increases the width of my column. I can also add an icon up here to the Quick Access Toolbar, and the way that I'm going to do that is to select the Customize Down Arrow. I'm going to go to More Commands, and then up here at the top where it says Popular Commands, I'm going to change that to Macros again, and you'll see my macros here. So I'm going to add it. And then, just like I did before, I can modify this. So let's say I give it a little icon here of the little person. Click OK, and then OK. And then now my little person shows up here. Now if I click on it, once again, it would create or it would actually perform the task. So let's go ahead and delete this column so you can see it work. And there it goes. So I have a way to add my macro up here. I can add it here. And then I also have some other ways to add it directly into the worksheet. So I can do things like adding graphics. I can put a uh, text box. I can put a shape. I can put smart art. And I can make this macro run based on the user clicking on those, those objects. One way that the user could run it is we could put a button directly inside of our form. And so what I can do is go up to the Developer tab, Insert, and then I'm going to select a button, which is this top left one here. And then what it will do is it will actually give me the option to draw the button. So I'm going to draw it here. It wants me to select what the macro is. So I'm going to select my macro. Go ahead and click OK. Now it just simply says button 2 right now, but it has text in it, so I can actually go through and I can delete this, and I can tell it to say hello. And so now I have my own text in it, and so if I get rid of G column again, click on the say hello, there it goes. So it actually will run my macro just directly from using this button. Now I want to get rid of the button, and if I click on it, it will actually run it again. So to get rid of it, I'm going to right-click on it. And then what that does is it selects it. <clears throat> I can press the Escape key on my keyboard to get rid of the menu. And now I can delete the button. And I just press the Delete key on my keyboard, and that got rid of it. If I were to left-click on it to try to select it, like I said, it just keeps running it, so that doesn't help. I can also do this with graphics. So I'm going to go up here to Insert, go to Shapes. Oops, not online shapes. Go to shapes. I want the smiley face. And so I'm going to draw a smiley face here. And then if I right click on this, I can assign a macro. And the macro that I want is the one called My Macro. Click OK. And if I delete the G column again, now when I click on the smiley face, it now adds Hello World to the G column. Once again, if I want to get rid of this, I have to right-click on it, press Escape on the keyboard to get rid of the menu, and then press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Other things that I can add that to, I could do Smart Art. I could take screenshots and insert them. I could do it with charts. So what I can do is I can make numerous different things run a macro automatically when I right, excuse me, when I click on it. And basically what it's doing is it's creating a hyperlink for that particular item to tell it to run the macro. No matter how I actually call these macros, they're all running behind the scenes in the Visual Basic Editor. They actually run through that script. All right, so <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to see the editor. So like I said before, I can do the Alt F11 keyword combination. It will bring up the editor. And I can see what it's doing here is it's selecting that range. So we've already gone through this code. But the idea here is, is that I can see what it selects and so forth. But the question is, what does this selection.font.bold equals true do? 
But what I could do is I could change this to false. And then what I could see is that this thing here is the value for whatever selected dot font dot bold. So if I were to run this macro right now, I'm going to save this. I'm going to come back over here and I want to run it. So I'm going to go to developer macros and then run it. You'll see that it turns the bold off. By setting that value to false, I'm telling the system not to make it bold, even though when I originally recorded it, I did make it bold. So once again, whatever's in this editor, this is what it's going to do. Now the problem with the macro recorder is it's very literal and the macro recorder will go step by step by step. So everything that I did, it will record each and every little step. Be real careful using the macro recorder because sometimes it will record more information than you need and then you also encounter times where it won't necessarily put data where you expect it to and sometimes it will overwrite the data that you need. So use the macro recorder to learn the basics. Use it to learn what kind of commands you need if you can't figure out how to do something. But for the most part, we're going to go ahead and type this stuff ourselves. In this lesson, you learned how to use the macro recorder, some of the problems with code created by the macro recorder, how to run an existing macro, including how to use buttons, clip art, shapes, word art, and smart art to run the macro.